CWPA Remote. Hi, I'm Ed Hawes, Director of Communications for the Collegiate Water Polo Association. And joining me today is probably the most famous person we've had on this series, uh, Matt Chan, uh, winner of season two of the Titan Games on NBC and Western Illinois University water polo alum. So great to have you with us today. All right, great, great to be uh, on the show. I appreciate you. So tell me a little bit about how did you get into water polo and Western Illinois and then you know, obviously how you progressed into the Titan games and everything else. Yeah. So I, uh, I went to Western Illinois from, I guess it'd be 1997 to 2001. And, uh, I swam growing up. We didn't have a, uh, a water polo team at the high school that I went to. So it was kind of like a rest day activity that we did sometimes on Sundays and stuff like that. So when I got the opportunity to actually play at Western uh, through the CWPA, we had a club team, uh, really jumped all over it. Um, I didn't really want to swim competitively anymore. Uh, and this was a great outlet to, you know, use the capacity of swimming that we've, or that I had from basically the age of five until I graduated from high school. Um, when the time came uh, to start playing, I didn't know how to play uh, competitively. So it was it was a learning experience for me. And, uh, once I, you know, learned kind of the, the basic structure of, of how you play water polo, it was just a blast. And I had fun with it for all, all four years that I was there. Well, you had more than fun. You won two great Plains division titles and your senior year, you were second team all conference in the great Plains. So I think you kind of went beyond just having fun with it. You guys are having success as well. Um, obviously, you wrap up your time at Western Illinois. Uh, you're now a firefighter. So literally, you have went from the water to fire. So talk a little bit about your firefighting experience and what drove you to you want to be a firefighter. Yeah. Um, well, first, just to build on what you said, you know, when I, when I joined uh, the water polo club at Western Illinois University in my freshman year, we were not good. Um, it was very disorganized practices. We didn't have a lot of swim practice, stuff like that. But we recognized that, uh, you know, where we had areas for improvement. And I learned a lot from those years, uh, from fresh, freshman year to my senior year, um, where, you know, not only did our team get better, we got uh, uh, a better recruiting process for for students that were, you know, that had backgrounds in water polo, but also everything from organizing the club, budgeting for the club, fundraising for the club, um, and, you know, even travel accommodations for the team. You know, we were in charge of all of that stuff. So I learned a lot from, from being a part of that club uh, that I've used in my adult life now for the, you know, for the remainder, remainder of my life. And I look back at those times and the experience I had with the CWPA and uh, the Western Illinois University Water Polo Club um, very, very fondly because we did. We took it from nothing to uh, multiple, uh, you know, championship, region, regional championships, uh, as well as multiple participations in the, in the national tournament at the end of the year. And it's something I'm very, very proud of. Uh, and, and I look back at it super fondly with all the friends that I made and, and the successes we had. But as far as going to firefighting, I, uh, I graduated from Western Illinois University with an IT degree. And at mm -hmm. that time, it was 2001, and the, the tech industry kind of took a hit, yeah. and I couldn't get a job. So uh, I ended up going to Winter Park Resort um, and, and working as just cooking pizzas for a while and being a ski bum. And I was introduced to firefighting at a volunteer fire department up there. And I decided that that was the route I was going to go for my career. And it's been, you know, 15 years of my life now. And I absolutely love every minute of being, being on duty, which you hear all the noise in the background. I'm on duty no, right now. So I, I understand. I've, I've dealt with that myself, you know, yeah. the firefighting side of it. Um, obviously, firefighter, uh, people may not know if they didn't follow the show. Uh, you had an injury in, I think, July 4th, 2014, had a bicycle injury, uh, almost lost your, your leg, a couple of limb-saving surgeries, 
yep. save that. Um, so you, I mean, you've been challenged your entire life, obviously with CrossFit now, you're also in the CrossFit into the shape because you're significantly bigger than the typical water polo player. Yeah. 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 Uh, the injury, the injury stuff was, you know, uh, it was just a road bump, uh, yeah, speed bump in, in the road. And, uh, um, I was able to, you know, rehab because of the shape that I was in, uh, pretty easily. So it just took time. I didn't have any damage to, you know, skeletal or muscular, uh, mm -hmm. problems. It was, it was basically just a vascular issue and, um, my leg doesn't work quite, quite like it used to, but it's, it's good enough to obviously do well at something like the Titan games and on yeah. my job as a firefighter. So, uh, you know, the obstacle becomes the way and, you know, if it gets in the mm -hmm. way, that's, that's how you live your life. But I'm, I, I, you know, I've decided a long time ago that any obstacle, I, I just wanted to do my best and, and overcome. So. Well, I mean, a year after the injury, you're back competing, uh, in CrossFit, competing at a high level, you're winning. Um, well, part of the, that question would be, how'd you get into CrossFit? I mean, obviously from a firefighter standpoint, physical strength is a huge help in the firefighting in terms of, you know, entry and everything else. And obviously ho having to carry hose, but how'd you get into CrossFit, uh, from water polo? Cause it's actually something we're seeing more and more for water polo players once they're done their playing time, they're going into CrossFit. So. Yeah. I mean, it makes perfect sense. Uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of water polo players, swimmers, stuff like that, you know, obviously have off seasons where dry land becomes, you know, or, or cross training becomes a, uh, a focus. And I wish I had known about, you know, that style of training while I was uh, swimming and playing water polo because, you know, m my training was always just in the water and a little bit of weights here and there. Um, I think it would have made me a much better player um, because of, because of the nature of the training. It's just, you know, you kind of get ready for everything mm -hmm. in the off season um, for firefighting. It's perfect because my job, I, really can't plan for anything because the minute you have a plan, the plan goes out the window. Um, so, you know, CrossFit's great, not only because it trains a bunch of different modalities, you know, so whether that's weightlifting, cardio, or uh, gymnastics where you're using just body weight exercises, um, they're also varied exercises in multi-planes and going overhead and pulling and, you know, uh, squatting and all of the above. Um, so, for my job, it's it's perfect because I'm prepared for just about anything that I can face, and that's why I started it, and that's why I continue to still do that style of training. Um, you know, it doesn't always look like like right now. I, it doesn't look anything like competitive CrossFit at all in any way, shape, or form. But I still include functional exercises. I do it at intensity from time to time. But I also do other things like long, slow distance training. I uh, love skiing, mountain biking, climbing. Uh, I hike, I hunt. And um, I think that style of training prepares you for all that stuff. But also that's those, those other elements also prepare you better for life. So, you know, I think the key is just mixing it up. All right. That kind of brings us to the Titan Games. Uh, how did you get into the Titan Games? Or, you know, how did you – get your name in there and then how that process go to get you into the games and then talk a little bit about competing as well at, on the show. And, you know, ultimately you won. So, you know, you were the best of the really? best. You know? Yeah. Well, uh, I, I followed the, uh, I, I, I was kind of just at home, um, you know, the la during the last episode of season one, uh, my wife was working on the weekend, uh, and she hadn't returned yet. So I was just watching it by myself. And at the end of the show, they said that um, they were accepting applications for season two. And I just filled out an application online and submitted a video. And it was pretty goofy. It was just me and my dog sitting on the couch saying why I'd be a good contestant. Mm -hmm. And uh, six to eight months later, they gave me a call, asked me if I wanted to come down to Atlanta, or I'm sorry, to uh, LA and and basically audition um, and do the combine, which is basically their their mm -hmm. physical preparation test. Um, and I did. And, you know, we went out there, I went out there and did my best, got to meet a lot of those people. And I got a call back in about two weeks and they said, good news and bad news. Good news is we'd like you to come down to Atlanta for the shooting. Bad news is we're going to make you an alternate. So I don't know why that decision was made. You know, I'd like to hear why I was an alternate and not a, uh, not a contestant initially, but 
you know, luckily enough, uh, they, uh, one of the contestants did have an injury prior to flying down and, uh, they gave me the go ahead to compete. And, you know, basically while I was there, I just soaked it in. It was three weeks in Atlanta and the first week was all just video, uh, stuff, you know, where they, Mm -hmm. they got B roll stuff for between the events and all that. I also built our story a little bit. And then the last two weeks was uh, the competition. And it, the competition was basically every other day. Um, so they gave us a little, you know, we'd do two to three events in one day with like two or three hours between events. Mm-hmm. And then uh, then they'd switch uh, the group that they were shooting uh, for, and they would do different events the next day. And it kind of cycled like that for a bunch of days. And, uh, you know, I lost some events you know, right off the bat, I lost the second event that I participated in, uh, with Bartley Weaver called, uh, Lunar Impact. And, uh, I lost against Joe Thomas and, you know, it was really kind of fulfilling to actually go through those loser brackets, uh, because it made me earn that, that opportunity to go, uh, against those three other regional competitors, uh, regional Titans in the final. And, you know, once, once I saw what the, the three person, uh, uh, semifinal was, I knew that, you know, because of being a firefighter and actually having my hands on that event once before that I was just going to excel at it. So I knew it was just a matter of getting to Mount Olympus and then, and then performing well in that final event. And man, Will took off like a shot out of hell and he, uh, he, t- I was like, Oh man, I'm in trouble. This guy's way faster than I am. And, uh, luckily, you know, because of, you know, training the way I do, I kind of knew the pace that I, I needed to maintain for myself mm-hmm. so that I didn't burn out. And, uh, I was able to maintain that pace and it just proved good enough at the end. I mean, I didn't beat Will by much, so it proved good enough that, uh, I was able to take the Titan championship. So it's pretty yeah, cool. It's, it's impressive. If people haven't watched the, the finale, they, they have to watch the finale because, he jumped out to a lead on you, and you just remained consistent. Came back, and in the end, you had a you pretty you had a pretty sizable lead there at the end to to win that thing. You got a pretty yeah. good lead on him at that point, and you know, obviously, a lot of things fall into what you do for a living with firefighting, with you know, having to break through and you know, get everything and all that. And that was a you know, you. you Made the league proud, if, if nothing else. If you made the league very proud for what you did, and you know, prove what a water polo player can do outside of the water as well as both inside of it. Yeah, I think that's a big takeaway for me is that you know, um, had I only done gym gym training, uh, you know, the the mm-hmm. whether that's CrossFit or whether that's you know some other program, mm-hmm. um, I probably wouldn't have performed as well as I did because there was a lot of uh, CrossFitters or functional fitness uh, athletes that or contestants that, that use those methods that didn't do a lot of the outdoor stuff or, you know, try weird stuff like swinging a hammer or, mm-hmm. um, you know, kicking through walls, like you said, um, you know, yeah. just, just stuff that I've had access to because of my job. And also because I get outside of the gym probably more often than I do inside of the gym now at this point. And I think those, uh, those skills that I've gathered doing the other stuff, that's really what allowed me to win that thing. So, you know, I'd say to the, the season three competitors, like, make sure you're not just doing stuff in the gym because it already is proven to not pay off uh, if that's all you're doing. All right. Well, we'll end it there. I thank you for doing this for us. Uh, congratulations no on the win. Congratulations on your service as a firefighter. And especially congratulations on being a great representative, not only the sport of water polo, but just a great representative of physical fitness and, you know, being a great guy to boot. So. Thank okay, you thank much. you so much. I appreciate your time. Thanks.